back to Tianhe Gymnasium here in Guangzhou, the capital of Guangdong province. Semi-finals day, and we know that Hiroyuki Endo and Yuta Watanabe will be in the men's doubles final tomorrow. But who will they play? We are about to find out. Will it be Li Chunhui and Liu Yu Chen, the World Championship gold medalists, or will it be the World Championship bronze medalists? Chen Hungling and Wang Qi Lin from Chinese Taipei. Well, if you were with us yesterday, you will have seen this man in the most incredible rally, a rally that made our play of the day. But he did injure his right knee in the process, and you can see that it's heavily strapped with a bandage on top. So Li Junhui obviously taking precautions about that knee injury. But as far as the group standings are concerned, it was a straight playoff yesterday against Astrup and Rasmus, and when that injury happened. Gideon and Sulkamolio, the number one seeds, all of their matches were null and void after they withdrew from their last match of the group. As far as uh, Group B was concerned, Chung Hung, Chen Hungling and Wang Chi Lin were the number two seeds, and uh, they won on Wednesday against their teammates. If you have two pairs from the same nation in the same group, they must play on the first day of the round robin competition. Uh, then they lost on the Thursday to Endo and Watanabe and then beat the two-time former champions, Asan and Setiawan, yesterday in three games, thereby securing their qualification uh, for the semi-final stage. So that confirms what we have just watched. Endo and Watanabe safely through to the final, but who will they play tomorrow? Will it be the world champions? Li Chunhui and Liu Yu Chen, or Chen Hangling and Wang Qilin. Well, as far as these two pairs are concerned, the world champions have not Ladies won a World Please Tour title all year, so they've been in two finals. But they did win the Asian Championships and the World Championships. Chen Hungling and Wang Chi Lin were in two World Tour tournament finals and won them both. But it has to be said, they were both at Super 300 level. So there was a huge roar from the fans here in the Tianhe Gymnasium when the world champions Li Chunhui and Liu Yu Chen were announced onto centre stage. And it's quite remarkable. If they hadn't have won the world title, they wouldn't be here at the HSBC BWF World Tour Finals because they only uh, finished uh, the year ranked 10 on the race to Guangzhou, but got the invitation as being reigning world champions. This the eighth meeting between the two players, and as you can pairs, and as you can see, the world champions have an overwhelming advantage, having won six of the previous seven, including the last one, which was the semi-final of the Japan 750 event. Uh, but it is even more concerning if you're a fan of the pair from Chinese Taipei, is the fact that the world champions have won the last five encounters between these two pairs. So the very tall man, Li Junhui, the one with the knee bandage, is 23 years of age, as indeed is his partner, Li Yu Chen born in Beijing, and he and his partner had three separate spells of being number one in the world. 
number two on the world rankings, but as I was saying, only 10 on the race to Guangzhou standings. But then they only played 11 tournaments. A one down on their requirement to play 12 tournaments as top committed players. Born in Anshan City in Liaoning province, Li Junhui. And when I tell you that he's tall, that isn't an understatement, is it? 195, that's six foot five. Mind you, his partner's six foot four. So they're both very tall individuals. Four finals this year from 14 tournaments. Two of those finals, as I was telling you, at World Tour events. And they beat the world number ones in the group on Thursday, Gideon and Sukumolio, who were the defending champions at the end of year finale. Had to play their teammates on the first day, as I was explaining a moment ago, as indeed did the pair from Chinese Taipei. So there was only five different nationalities present in the men's doubles discipline. Two pairs from Indonesia, two from China and two from Chinese Taipei. Wang Chilin is 23 years of age. He'll turn 24 next month. Chen Hungling is 32. A vastly experienced player. Played in the Super Series finals <coughs> seven years ago in the mixed doubles discipline Chen. with Chen Wen Sing. Ended up third in the group. But this pair are making history today because they're the first pair ever from their country to reach the semi-final in the men's doubles discipline at the end of year finale. They're confirming what I told you during the look at the group standings after the three days of group play. Ivo Kassel from Switzerland is our umpire for this one. Crystal Tan, our service judge. So the big question is, how big a problem is that knee injury sustained yesterday against the European champions, Astrup and Orasmussen? Ladies and the gentlemen, answer, we hope, is not too serious. On my right, Liu Yuqian and Li Junhui, China. <laughs> and on my left, Chen Hongling and Wang Qilin, Chinese Taipei. <laughs> Yu Yu Chen to serve to Wang Ji Ling. Love all. Play. So the world champions nearest to us. Service over. Getting One the second semi final underway. Incidentally, whilst it may be the World Championship gold medalists against the World Championship bronze medalists, they did not play against each other Two in the semi-final left. stage of the World Championships earlier this year in Nanjing. This pair lost to Komora Three and Sonoda. Left. Well, that's a worry, Morton. Not definitely, able. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Not able. He didn't. He didn't move at all. No. Well, that semi-final at the uh, World Championship in Nanjing as well was uh, a first for Chinese Taipei as well. It was indeed. It was. And, that, and now players from Chinese Taipei have won medals in all five disciplines at the World Championships. Only six World Championship medals in total. Across five disciplines. That's, that's pretty, pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> impressive, isn't it? It is. It is. Two, four. So chances are that it's uh, perhaps 
the last time we will see Chen Hongling on international top badminton. Because he, I saw that his, his partner Wang Xilin is playing with Po Li Wei in the Korean Masters. And chances are that maybe he will start. Well, I heard you say that on commentary earlier in the week. Yes. And I've been investigating have since. Have you? I have. And uh, our colleagues uh, have been running around today and have spoken to the man <laughs> in question. Four. OK. That's and good. he says that he's going to still play some uh, lower grade tournaments, but obviously he's, this partnership is going to come to an end because he feels that perhaps at the age of 32, and he's going to turn 33 in February, yes. that he perhaps won't still be at his best come the Tokyo Olympics in 2020. So hopefully we'll still see him around, but not at the major events. Yeah, but he's gracefully stepping down, if yeah. you can say that, and let the younger ones play. Yeah. But what a career he has had. He has made fantastic results uh, over the years, I think, for for whatever he has been given from start, you know, he, he's really made the best of it. Yes, mixed doubles. He was a bronze medalist at the Asian Games with Chen Wen Sing. In 2010, he now has his World Championship uh, bronze medal. He's, he's achieved an awful lot. Three Super Series tournament finals, winning two titles. And it's been a wonderful last six months. On the uh, 2nd of August this year, they were number 15 on the world ranking. Yeah, and now number four. And now they're number four. Eighth consecutive week as number yeah. four. And it's really tricky to get into the top ten and then start moving up in the top ten as well. So they have done well. Five, six. Wang Chi Lin was crouching down low in the defensive stance there, wasn't he? Oh. A nod of approval from Chen Chi Chu. Coach. I think he was particularly happy with the follow-up at the net. That is over. Eight. All. Oh, that's a lovely shot. Guiding it down into the mid-court area towards the tram line. Oh. 
clever. Oh, he's such a good tactician. Is this man Chen Hung Ling? Ten, eight. And he does it with style, doesn't he? Look at that. It's just so nice. Yeah. And I think there was some strategy in the fact that uh, Liu Yuchen did not want to change the shuttle because the two big boys from, uh, so over. from China is having this more power. And uh, an old shuttle is slightly slower, but that might not damage their attack too much, but it would damage the attack of the Chinese Taipei players. Yeah. Interesting. One point in it at the mid-game interval. So my little fun fact for the day is that this man, Wang Chi Lin, is the first and only player ever to win the doubles double on the HSBC BWF World Tour. Achieved that in New Zealand, and you were there. I was there. I saw it. I commentated on it. Winning men's doubles, mixed doubles. Eleven, all. It's been some considerable years, I suspect. I haven't looked into it since we haven't had a female player win uh, the doubles double at some tournament on either Super Series or HSBC BWF World Tour. Yeah, it has happened on more occasion on, yeah. on the female side. Definitely. Well, 11. Three points since the mid-game interval. 13, 11. To the tall men from China, the world champions. to his partner. You should have moved for that, but he's <laughs> injured. <laughs> no, I think he's actually uh, possibly indicating there was a double hit on it on the other side. But the umpire didn't see anything. So, um, of course, can't react to it. It's 
day long. I suspect he didn't mean to lead that. No, it was what you call a swing and a miss, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well. Oh, that's lovely. They just didn't see it at all. No. It really would be fantastic for him to finish on a, a real high of contesting the final tomorrow. Finish his elite tournament career with a 33rd international tournament final. Yeah. And the group match between uh, Endo and Watanabe and uh, Chen Hongling and Wang Chilin ended 21-19, 21-19 for the mm. uh, Japanese pair. So it's a close one. Yeah. <laughs> Clever. Mm. Oh, challenge. Over. Can't miss that one, can you? Challenges <laughs> called out. Oh, smiles at. <laughs> My goodness me. <laughs> Well, that had to be a tactical <laughs> challenge, surely. They can't possibly have thought that was in. But they were so committed to the challenge, both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's a good hitter, Wang Chilin. And that was steep too. 16 all. In the beginning of this match, we haven't really seen it a lot on a few occasions, but the last three or four, he's really been hitting it hard. This is a good little run, isn't it? Four points. Three straight points. Just delightful. 
<laughs> Look at that shot. He's such a clever player, isn't he? 16. He is, but it's also coming from the mixed doubles that he used to play. He can mm. find the gaps. He's always looking for the gaps yeah. in his defence as well. It's not just blindly trying to get it back. Mm. Well, the run of points comes to an end. Service over. 17, 19. But it has put an awful lot of pressure <coughs> on the home pair. <laughs> Lovely, lovely drop shot off the quick over. serve. And it means that Chen Hong Link and Wan Chi Lin have three game point opportunities. A shot from Wang Chi Lin and a stunned silence from the fans here in Guangzhou. 21 18 confirms the umpire opening game to the number two seeds Chen Hon Ling and Wang Chi Lin. Watch this final shot from Wang Chi Lin. Second game. Love all. Play. So one game to the good. Oh, hey! Turns over. One love. But one expects the world yeah. champions to come out and sort of. Uh, play at a higher pace but the big question mark is whether they physically have the capability due to the injury of Lee Jun Hui. Yeah I don't know whether he's injured but he, he looks slightly slower One. than what he normally is. Oh. Either he is sort of cautioning, he's cautious whatever he's doing but I, I think you're right it looks like they cannot really add oh. on the same pressure but that doesn't mean that they can't win. No. They can still win it. I, I'm very confident they can. 
but they need to set a few good things together. Oh my goodness. Like here, that was a really good surf. Yep. So they've got to be strong around the service situation. They have to make sure that the lift they get, they have a good chance of killing them and so on. So it's, it's a lot about quality. Yeah, this, this is what I expected, in all honesty. I expected them to come out hard and fast and, and try and pull away. And a 6-1 advantage is quite considerable in men's doubles. It is. Make that 7-1. Come long. Service over. Two, seven. That was an interesting choice of shot, and Wang Chiling chose to clear that one. It was an attacking clear, but it completely oh. caught Yu Chen off balance. As good as Chen Hongling was in the beginning, or in the first game, I think here in the beginning of the second game, he's made some quite bad mistakes. Yeah. on his defence there, Wang Chi Lin, wasn't he? <laughs> Forehand side. Oh, strings have gone there. Tennis players, he's yeah. taking oh, he's his racket out of a, a plastic cover. It's what Roger Federer always does, isn't it? <laughs> over. I thought exactly the same. <laughs> 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 
four, nine. Got him. And that's the problem when you stand committed on your defence, one Those side or the other. Ten, five. Hey. Oh. Five the well, all credit to this pair because they have played with much more intensity and much more purpose at the start of this second game. But the pair from Taipei have gone off the boil considerably. Six points, the advantage for the world champions. And in all honesty, Morton, at this sort of level, you can't afford to go off the boil for, <laughs> for, for a, a rally. For a second. No, I, I agree with you, but I think that uh, Yu Chen is really playing well. I yeah. think he's, um, he is really covering a lot. He's playing a lot of winners. He's strong in his defence. He's challenging his uh, opponents all the time in certain shots and so on. I, I really think he's playing well. 11-5. Mm -hmm. yes. ah. Play. So it's over. Six, eleven. Well, holding his arm up there, it looked as if he well, was challenging, but it was called see. out. <laughs> he just wanted to make sure that he was in early with the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. I like the fact that Yu Chen, from the left-hand side of his court, is not serving to the tee. He's serving towards his opponent's left shoulder. He is. And it's so often that uh, players seven. are serving into the tee. If you go statistic-wise, it must be 95% of yeah. all uh, low services going into that point. Yeah, serve to the tee from the right-hand side of his court. Will he will go towards seven. the left shoulder of Chen Hung Ling again. He's serving well. Yeah. That was into the tee. Yeah. That is over. 
8.50. But even on the serve, it's very important to have variation on it. Mm. I think we're treated to a third game. Mm, I think so too. is loving it. I suspect this is the longest rally of the match so far. Yeah. was the longest rally. Over. 9.17. I think that was the, the weakness <coughs> exposed there. where he really can't get forward to these kind of shots. Three points away from a third and deciding First game. Over. 18, nine. Service over. 19 points required by the world champions to take this second game. He's got quite a big swing of his racket at the front of the court. That might get him into trouble at times, oh. I think. Game point opportunities. A whole host of them. They'll level this semi final at one game apiece. 11. Two service errors now, I think, from the Chinese bet. One game all. 36 minutes, and it's one game apiece. Second game won by 21-12. 21-12 confirms the umpire.
couple of times in that rally. Wang Chi Lin looked as if he was kneeling down to have a bit of a rest. One day more. So a new shuttle required for the start of this third and deciding game. I think, as far as the pair from Chinese Taipei are concerned, Morton, One, they have to make a good start because I felt the slightly sluggish start to the second game, and from there, I don't think they really believed. They, it was almost as if they were resigned very early on that it was going to be three games. I think you're right, and a bit what happened in uh, in the other men's doubles as well, where the Danes, Astrup and Rasmussen, they kind of lost confidence. Yeah. And I think the same can happen here very quickly. Yeah, I agree. So it's over. One, two. Chen Hongming's uh, return of serve into the uh, mid-court area, catching Yu Chen quite a lot, and the lift is not getting good enough. And that's why he's under pressure here. But that return of serve really made a big difference. That's over. Four, two. Fast exchanges.
beautiful. Oh, what a touch. Five, four. I'm not sure he was even really looking at the shuttle. He played that round the head, the final shot. Watch this. Oh, yes, he was watching it. That is really beautiful placement. And, of course, having just the view and the knowledge and all that to yes, play that shot is, is just fantastic. Somehow I feel that uh, Wang Chi Lin have to step up his game if uh, the pair from Chinese Taipei is going to stand a chance of winning. In what way? In his attacking play or...? He somehow he's, he's not looking to play good counter-attacking shots in order to perhaps even slow it down, block it, uh, get the lift. Kind of, he's just going into these flat exchanges, he's going into where his opponents are really good. And also defensively, like that last shot, he's yeah. far too committed one side oh, on, one -sided. His, on, his, on his defence. Watch yeah. this. Very one-sided. Look, look where his racket is. Yeah. He hit it down his backhand side. He's yeah. got no chance. Yeah. But that's what I mean. He, he's definitely got to step up. Yeah. I concur. That's over. Mm. Six, oh. Looked concerned about diving, didn't he? Yeah, he was sort of turning the knee yeah. on the side. Oh, was that? Was just missed it. Yeah. But the idea was terrific. Over. Seven, six. Once again, the serve of Yu Chen is just so good. Eight, Hong Ling cannot six. attack it that well. He's really, really serving well. And that has definitely been a, a factor in this match. Service so over. Seven, eight. There's landed in. He deliberately left that one to Yu Chen. Yeah, he was hoping it was going out on the back line. Went clearly in. Interesting, I think, that uh, Chen Hongling is saying to Wang Chilin that don't go cross court on these defensive ones because they're intercepting it so well. Go straight, I think that's what he was trying to explain. be a costly miss. But seen from uh, the point of view of Chinese Taipei, I think that was definitely a notch up in terms of uh, the whole energy in that rally and, and the way that Wang Chilin played it and attacking more, playing some blocks and all that. There was a lot more good energy in that one.
error on the return of serve. And it is the World Championship gold medalists who have the advantage at the change of ends. Three-point advantage against the World Championship bronze medalists. Forty-six minutes into the match. Mm. Yeah. Still lots of discussion even after Chen Chi Chu has left. Do you like to see that, Morton? Do you like to see the players taking personal responsibility and adding? We don't know whether it was adding to what the coach said. It could have been, could have been totally opposite for all we know, but... But let's hope. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I do, I do uh, like it when uh, players are taking on responsibility. I, I actually, I don't think you can become a good badminton player unless you do that. Yeah. So it's not just implementing what the coach says. You've got to be able to think for yourself and work it out yourself. Absolutely, and you've got to have that sixth sense of playing it at the right time and the right places and all that. And if you haven't got that, then it's going to be difficult. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of help from uh, the coach's bench these days, but still, you are there having to make these split decisions, yeah. split second decisions. Yeah. And we are, after all, an individual sport, and it should be the test of the individual or pair, of course. Absolutely. Five straight points for eight all to 13-8. And is this the decisive move by Li Chunhui and Liu Yuchen? But it was cleverly done by uh, Liu Yuchen, the way that he kind of tempted Chen Hongling. He was passing mm. him on that low one at the net and see whether he was going for the bait, and he did. Mm. So That's I think that was really cleverly played by yeah. Liu Chen. Certainly, Liu Yu Chen taking personal responsibility there. Decisive.
That's the block. I think they only got uh, the invitation to these World Tour finals because of the fact the reigning world champions didn't really qualify on their own right on the World Tour ranking. Now, since the, the World Championship, they have not really performed that well. So uh, they lost a lot of points on the way. But they seem to be back into it now. Yeah. 17, 10. Committed once again on his defence, Wang Chi Lin. And especially okay. second time. Mm. Maybe not so committed on the first time, but the second smash coming to him, he is yeah. completely, utterly committed. Yeah. Three points away from a third World Tour tournament final this year. All challenge. Yu Yu Chen. As far as me and you are concerned. Yeah, clearly in. Well done, line judge. One challenge remaining. Service over. 11 18. Play. Well, that was uh, a very good uh, tactical manoeuvre by the Chinese Taipei pair because they managed to move Yu Chen on the back line from side to side, what the two Chinese has been very successful doing to the uh, pair from Chinese Taipei, that always they have to run and move from side to side in order to attack. And they were very successful doing that now. Yeah. But, as you say, now it's believable again, yeah. isn't it? Suddenly, 18-10 yeah, down. Yeah. And then now 14-18. Well, well, well. Expect the unexpected. When it comes to badminton. When it comes to sport, yeah, <laughs> that's why we love it. Oh. 
Oh, my goodness. What on earth was he trying to do? That was never possible to play around the headshot. I see again moving from side to side, then see. That's what the Chinese pair has been so good doing. They have been able to move their opponents on the back line as and when they attack. Yeah. 19.15. Two points away from the final. Good serve again. One point away from the final. Well, that service has really made a big difference. Yeah. There's been a huge factor in this match. Yu Chen and uh, Jin Hui is really getting a very nice, good attacking situation out of it. First match point opportunity. Oh, they're challenging. Yeah, I think it's going out. Waiting, looking up at the giant scoreboard. Here we go. What does Hawkeye it's say? In. No, it's in. It's in. Match over. And the world champions, Li Junhui and Liu Yu Chen. They come through in three games, coming from a game deficit, as indeed they had to do in the last of their group matches against the Danes. But here in the semi-final knockout stage, they are through to the final. 21-15 in the deciding game. A match just a few seconds shy of the hour mark. Well, as they congratulate each other, we should say a huge thank you to Chen Hung Ling for the number of wonderful matches he's given us over the years, if indeed we don't see him at international competition again. But there it is, confirmation that he goes out at the semi-final stage as he hangs up his uh, rackets at major competition because Li Junhui and Liu Yu Chen are through to the final. 21-15, deciding game.